So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Saad. I'm a database engineer at BlaBlaCar. I joined the team now two years ago. So we are a team of about 15 people handling, designing, building our infrastructure that hosts our services. So uh, my main focus is on databases and mainly MySQL and PostgreSQL ones. And so let's start. The subject of the talk today is uh, mainly about containers. So how do we handle it at BlaBlaCar? So how many of you in the room are using containers? Okay. Uh, and who use containers but without Docker? <laughs> All right, I'm not alone. So the agenda today, we are going to start with a little overview of BlaBlaCar and uh, how we are running our production. Then PostgreSQL at BlaBlaCar and uh, what we are run with it. And finally, how we switched our you know, our implementation of PostgreSQL in a container way. So, overview. How many of you have already used BlaBlaCar at least once? That's nice. <laughs> so, as you already know, we are a community of uh, carpooling. So, we provide sharing for our members. So, we mainly, it's about 300 kilometers uh, trips in average. For example, someone who, uh, who is going to Brussels from Paris and he have empty seats in his car, he's just gonna post it on the platform and share the seats to four passengers. So as you can see, we are present in 22 countries, mainly in Europe, a bit of in South America, Russia and India. So it's a big challenge to be worldwide. And also on the side of uh, high traffic, we have more passengers than British Airways on a quarter basis. So we have about 50 million travelers and they are like 10 million approximately. I'm gonna show you our core data ecosystem. So at BlaBlaCar we are divided in two teams. So we have core data I'm in part of. So we handle the databases running our projection systems and we have also a dedicated team for analytical databases. So for Hadoop, Vertica and stuff. First, we have MySQL. So MySQL well-known database system, so I'm not gonna go into detail with it. We run it with Galera cluster for high availability purposes. So it's running on MariaDB, uh, starting with the 10.0 version. So multi-master synchronous databases that handle transactional, the transactional platform. We have Cassandra. So Cassandra is designed to handle large amount of data at scale, also for read and write, without single point of failure. So it's a distributed database system and column-oriented. We also use Redis. So Redis is a key value data store, uh, very fast and uh, very robust. So it store all the things in memory and have optional durability. The main use case that you can have is for counters, queues systems, and cache. Elasticsearch. Elasticsearch is our search engine. It stores JSON documents. And it's also distributed for high availability features. Last but not least, we have PostgreSQL. So, well known, you already know what is PostgreSQL. So, we like it for extensibility reasons. So, we have a lot of extension used on BlaBlaCar and for stability purposes. So, now I'm gonna go into Containers. So why did we decided to go containers at BlaBlaCar? La, we did the switch two years ago, and uh, we were managing our infrastructure, running configuration management tools like Chef on our own servers on bare metal with our, our own data centers. So we have the problem of deployment speed. 
So every time you want to buy, we want to use new servers, we needed to buy new ones, waiting the, the delivery and so on. Uh, the other, other main thing is resource allocation. So we had the abil ability to, to provide more than one service on one host, but we can't iso isolate them easily. We decided to go on-premise on premise rather, rather than go on cloud, mainly because we already had the team inter internally that have all the skills necessary to handle the, the change. So network and hardware skills mainly. We decided to go with Rocket for container engine. So who know what is Rocket here in the room? Few people? All right. So Rocket at that time, it was a better project to our needs. So it was more stable. Uh, they have better security and network features. Um, nowadays, we know that Docker is the main container engine running across the, the world. And, um, but at the time, it, was, it wasn't really as stable as we wanted it to, to be. So to orchestrate our, uh, to our containers, we decided to go with the CoverOS container Linux distribution towards them. So it's a Linux distribution provided by the same company, so CoverOS, that make also the Rocket container engine. So it's a very simple and stable distribution that the only and main purpose is to, is to run containers. So you don't have many fancy features. It does only one thing, but it does it very well. To, orchest to orchestrate those containers, we needed an orchestration tool. Uh, the main known is Kubernetes but we decided uh, at the time to go with Fleet. So Fleet is provided by default with CoreOS, an orchestration tool that manages systemd files across data centers and run them on different hosts. We have our own internal tool called GGN to generate the systemd unit file. It has the ability to generate, start, update, all those systemd unit files by using templates and different attributes. So it can be used across different environments, different services, different applications, based on the same templates. To build our containers, uh, we could use, the, for example, Chef, but we decided to go with our dedicated tool that's called DGR. So it builds and configure what we call app container images, so ACI. Basically, you're gonna, like with Docker, you have a manifest or a Docker file when you are writing what, what's the purpose of your container and what it will do. So it's our tool and it's um, very good at doing light, light, light things. So when you only want to run one command, one process or one thing, it does it very well and in a lightweight manner. So, and we have the pods. So for those who are already worked with Kubernetes, pods are an, aggre an envir environment where our images are aggregated and share the same, the same context of execution and network features. So like that, we can have all our processes sharing the same infrastructure. And when we have one failing images, the whole pod goes down to ensure stability of the service. There's one, one slide to summarize it. So as you can see on the bottom of the slide, we have the hardware, so bare metal servers. We only use one type of hardware for scalability reasons. So when we decided to go to buy servers at scale, so it cost us less money. On top of that, we have our fleet cluster that stores systemd unit file description in a etcd backend, and that is managed by our tool ggn to start and deploy them. So we have our rocket pods running. So like I said, we have one or more images. So it's the little dots in the little blue boxes. 
a little example with, uh, for example, PostgreSQL pod. We have the PostgreSQL process running in a container and two other containers running with it, so a monitoring and a nerve one. For example, with the front end, you have PHP, Nginx, the monitoring application, and NERV and Synapse. So NERV and Synapse are used with Zookeeper to provide service discovery. Uh, who in the room use service discovery for purposes? All right, no one. So little presentation of service discovery. We decided to get rid of DNS internally because it wasn't sustainable for our needs and we needed something faster to handle the change of configuration in our infrastructure. So to store the change of configuration, we decided to go with Zookeeper. Zookeeper is provided by the Apache Foundation. It's a key value data store that is well known for reliability, um, that is very fast and scalable. So to report our services into Zookeeper, we use a um, project based on Airbnb smart stack. So first to report, we have NERV. It was rewriting at BlaBlaCar in Golang, so we called it just GoNerve. It performs some health checks on the pod that, that is running, and it will write an ephemeral key in a Zookeeper pass. That way, when the, an, um, a container goes down, the, the key in Zookeeper will just disappear. So this one is present on each service that is running to provide service discovery. For application like front-end application that have the need to discover the configuration, we use Go Synapse. So like GoNerv, it's a rewriting Airbnb project that has enhanced features, and it watch a Zookeeper pass to discover the, config the configuration and their services. It hosts a, a local HA proxy to to send the connection to the right uh, to the right channels. So a slide just to confirm just what I said. So we have a web application on the bottom, blah, blah, car, hitting its local HA proxy that's connected to one node. And we have our service discovery on the top. So on the left side is the client pod, and on the right side is the backend pod. So what does the backend pod does? Uh, we have Gunner that performs L checks, so it can performs different types of L checks. You can be checking a TCP port that is available. You can perform uh, some SQL checks uh, based on different uh, type of databases, PostgreSQL, MySQL, and so on. And it will report them in Zookeeper. In this case, it's the slash database pass, and we write the node one, one presence. On the, uh, on the client side, Go Synapse will watch the slash database pass and it will reload each time it detects a change of, of configuration, the local HA proxy. So in that case, every time we have a change of configuration, the local HA proxy of our application will reload and we'll see the new image of the infrastructure. So that was the introduction. Let's get into PostgreSQL usage at BlaBlaCar. So we have third main usage. Uh, first one is for third part application where PostgreSQL is a prerequisite. So um, in, our, in our infrastructure, we have a lot of projects that where it's mandatory to use PostgreSQL as a backend. We have homemade tools. Uh, because we have a lot of teams internally that are very confident with the usage of PostgreSQL and they want to use some specific features. And mainly for spatial data. So we are a travel company, so we wanted absolutely to use the PostGIS extension of PostgreSQL. It's uh, like we think the better usage of spatial data. So for example, uh, we have a, um, a project called Corridoring. So when you have a trip going, for example, from Par Paris to, to Bourges, you are traveling through Orléans. In this case, when you have passengers that are looking for a sub part of this trip, they can contact you 
to travel with you. In that way, we have a better filling up rate of our cars and we have happier members. The other part is point to point. So point to point is one of the focus that we have at the moment of BlaBlaCar. So for people traveling, mainly they're tra they're, even if they, if they live and they went and going for to suburbs or big city, they're always looking for travel from main cities. But we want them to, to, to just have door to door travels. So in this case, uh, for example, if I am in Rambouillet and want to go to Le, Le Creusot, I'm not anymore going to look for a Paris Lyon travel like uh, for train, car or plane. But I will, I will look at blah blah car for Rambouillet, Le Creusot travel. And our mission is to give, him, is to give them the best answer to their needs and provide them trips going from near their home to near where they are going to. Some numbers to that. Uh, for example, if we take Amiens, uh, it's a city in the north of Paris. Last month, we have more than 3,000 rides that passed by the city. Uh, to represent uh, about the data that we have, we have more than 1 million of meeting points for our drivers and passengers. And on this database, we have, uh, on average, uh, more than 50,000 uh, rows that are read each minute. So how we use to operate our PostgreSQL cluster. So streaming replication, everyone in the, the room, I think, will know what it is. So the main reason we used it, it was for disaster recovery and to spread reads across slaves. So it was one of the feature, but it, in our case, it, uh, it was necessary to have manual interventions. We know that, we ha we ha that there are many automatic solutions that do it, but for us, failovers need to be handled by a human and not by a, by a program because there are many cases when you want to have an automatic failover. So it was not really friendly at uh, BlaBlaCar for our team. So uh, for example, when you have a failover recovery, it's really painful. So what are you gonna do with the previous node that, that was a master? And uh, how do you handle the switchover for all the slaves to go to the right uh, master now? So we needed a change. We defined a target with some points. So we wanted to scale our rights, mainly. We wanted to ease deployments. We wanted the maximum availability features possible. And we wanted to have like the philosophy of expendable resources. So in the container world, we know that each container could uh, fail at a moment in a point in time. It's also the case for resources like host and network. We know that we are not uh, very secure with it. Uh, we wanted to get rid of slaves and wanted to get rid of failovers. There are some projects that we looked at. So you, you have Postgres, XC that was renamed uh, X2, so multi master synchronous project. But uh, I think it was like uh, leftover. We have no news on the development side. We have Postgres Excel. So it was um, at first very interesting on paper, but we, when we tried to implement it, we, we thought that it was too complex and too heavy for us. You needed more process and more nodes. You, ha you have the need of global transaction managers to handle every Postgres node, and you needed also coordinators nodes. We looked at PJ Logical, so also very good project, but we hadn't the ability to have multiple masters, so we it was not possible to scale right for our needs. You have also Bucardo, Sloni, and uh, Landist. Uh, they all are logical replication systems, but with some caveats. You have double write overhead, 
like in the previous talk, uh, about triggers uh, and uh, change data capture, they manage the replication in trigger-based way. So it wasn't suitable for our needs, and also to handle data definition language when we wanted we went, when we wanted to operate change for our tables, uh, it wasn't replicated in, in a good way. So mainly you have uh, two solutions in Postgres, so physical or logical replication. Uh, for logical replication, you only replicate data objects and their chains. For physical replication, it's block addresses and byte by byte. Uh, otherwise, uh, outside Postgres, you have also replication system. You can use uh, disk replication system and so on, but we wanted to only have a solution based on the application level or middleware level. So, uh, and we decided to go on a logical way. So, we switched to a new implementation and we chose to go to took a look at BDR. Who know what is BDR in the room? All right, so BDR stands for Bidirectional Replication. It's an open source project by Second Quadrant, so they have a bench down here, so you could just like, ask with them and talk with them also. Uh, it's a multi-master asynchronous replication system, so it's logical. Uh, I, say it's, uh, I say it's asynchronous, you could enable the synchronous commit but it's not really recommended for stability reasons. You can have to, from two to 48 nodes that all handle reads and writes. Uh, it's optimal for geo-distributed databases. For example, if you have uh, databases in, uh, in Europe, Asia, America, and so on, when you are world, worldwide, it's, I think, the best use case. So some points, why it was a confirmation for us. Uh, all nodes will support reads and writes. Uh, in that case, we can handle and manage our load to all nodes. We don't have no more failovers. So failovers was painful for us. And in this case, we don't have the need to handle them anymore. There are no other process or any nodes needed besides PostgreSQL nodes to handle the replication and uh, the whole process. And it's partition tolerant. So it's very robust solution that we choose. Some caveats with it that comes. Uh, we used a modified version of PostgreSQL 9.4. So with the version one of BDR, you can use BDR Version, version 2 is PostgreSQL 9.6, but it's for uh, second quadrant support customers at this time. Uh, as it's asynchronous replication, you have to be aware for your application that you could have replication lag. Uh, replication lag is um, a main problem for transactional and payment solution, but in our case, it wasn't really a problem because we only store like geo, geospatial data, meeting points, coordinates, and so on. So it was okay. Another point is conflicts. So when you update the same row in two different nodes, for example, uh, for example, you take the salary of an employee, you update it in two different nodes, you have like some problems. So by default, BDR uh, have a conflict system that pick the last write, but you could extend it and write your own conflict resolution scenarios. You have DDL logs. Uh, the first reason of DDL logs, when you are going to make a change on your table, an uh, alter, for example, it will wait that all nodes are in the same point of time and have the same visualization of the data. In that way, they are all consistent. But if you have replication lag in this case, it will lock every change in the table. Uh, there are some statements that are not replicated. BDR works in a per database level. So for example, when you want to create a new user, you have a specific command that comes with BDR to replicate 
all across all nodes, but by default, it's not made. And you have some statements that are not support, supported yet. Uh, for example, when you want to uh, make a, to change ownership of objects. So implementation here is the the definition of an ACI, so an, an image of a rocket container. Uh, the top part is like a Docker, so it's mainly uh, to describe the container. And we have on the bottom a specific part of rocket. So we have run levels and uh, templates for pre-start scripts. So what we do at blah blah car is that we run specific scripts to configure containers uh, just before they start. In our case, is to check the node to see if there are already uh, BGR nodes configured in the, in the service and so on. So if there is no configuration, we're going to init the node. If uh, it's not the case, we're just going to run and expose the Postgres service. So let's dive into the implementation of the init script. So to, to, start, to start new nodes for BGR, we precise a donor attribute in the, in the case we want to join an existing BGR group. If we want to init a new BGR group, we are just not going to put this attribute. So the case is very simple. The node will start and act as a new member and create a group. So the other case when, when we have donor attributes, we are going to, con to connect to the donor node, retrieve user definition on the donor by uh, we are using pg dump all with the dash g parameter to retrieve uh, grants. We are going to join the BDR group and then create, create minimum objects that allow us, for example, in our case, monitoring and so on. Uh, we had to extend the script uh, for containers because they are expendable resources. And for example, if your container will move from one host to another host of, or if it loses some data, you have to handle the case. So what it's going to do, when it's going to start, it's going to check on the donor if we have already a definition of this local node. If it's the case, it's going to apart the node from the BDR group, delete entries in BDR nodes table and BDR connections table to have like a clean status of the group, and just rerun the previous steps to get definition of user, join the group, and see if your objects are present or not to create them. I'm going to dive now into monitoring and alerting cases. So starting from the right, we use Prometheus. So Prometheus is a time-based data store that handles metrics. Uh, we use an exporter to, uh, to expose metrics. So for PostgreSQL, it's not provided by default. So we have to run a, a different SEI on the same pod to expose those metrics. So on the bottom, you, we use Grafana to make dashboards for, uh, for those metrics. And on the left, we use PagerDuty for alert purposes. So for example, this is one of our dashboards. We have two principles when we build dashboards. It's to check usage and saturation. So minimum component for us, uh, the number of connection and status of connection that we have, the number of reads and writes. Uh, for example, there are two metrics uh, on the cache, so the catch ratio and the blocks reads to enhance performance. And we also check the lag between uh, the nodes. So there are some some specific uh, particularities with uh, BDR, we needed to uh, enhance the exporter, the, the metric that comes by default. We needed to see, for example, the number of rows in BDR nodes table, BDR connections table, but we also extended uh, PostgreSQL metrics 
by checking pgstat replication table and replications dot table. So on the top of the screen, as you can see, we have a templating, uh, templating templated part only if we use BGR. And the second one is is used everywhere, even if it, even if it's not a BGR uh, BGR service. Uh, to you to handle backup and uh, recovery, so we don't use physical backups. We we do logical backup with pgdump. The main reason is to uh, to in a recovery case uh, with BGR there are no uh, there are no solution to make a backup and a recovery by default. So to handle physical backups, you have to create a new BDR cluster with this data and to add new nodes. So we decided to go with a logical backup and some specificities. So we, uh, the dump is divided into two files. We, ha we first have the file with structure definition and the file with data. So we retrieve the two dumps and we are gonna go into the, um, the structure dump to get rid of all the statements that are prohibited in BDR and stand them for, for example, if we want to handle sequences, with BDR you have global sequences. So sequences are distributed between all nodes and by default PostgreSQL doesn't handle it. So we have to modify the definition of sequences to use the BDR plugin. Then we just load the structure file and the data file. To give you an example uh, with backup, the, the thing that we can do with Prometheus is to push metrics into what we call uh, a getaway. So we are gonna push metrics, in this case, is the, um, the time at which the backup uh, began. And the, all the, specific, the specific attributes are pushed in the, in the address that you call, so you, the job the job name is backup um, underscore the environment of the, the service. The target is the node, and you have the service name and the type of the backup. As you, uh, with that, we can make dashboards. So like that, we know what's the time uh, of the last successful backup, how many time does it take to perform those backups, and so on. We also can uh, make alerts with that to check if we uh, have all backups. Going into alerting, this is a definition of a Prometheus alert. So you, uh, with Prometheus comes a specific query language called PromQL. So as you can see there, we are gonna check if um, the, the last backup of a specific service is older than 24 hours. If it's a successful condition, where it's gonna raise an alert with specific labels. So labels are used for routing alerts. So we can put, for example, their uh, severity, the stack, and the team. With severity, for example, when it's a, criti a critical severity, we push alert to pager duty. And when it's a warning, we just raise a Slack alert. Uh, with the team attribute, we can route it to the good Slack channel or uh, raise the alert to the good uh, to the good person with pager duty. And on the bottom, you have annotation. So with annotation, you can uh, have a summary, and the summary is a description of this alert to the person. You can add links. So we have, uh, in this case, a link of a dashboard for the people, so they just can see what's uh, what's the the problem on the service. A little feedback on uh, BDR. We, was, we are very satisfied with availability purpose. So it's now running for more than, uh, more than a year in production and we didn't have any outage yet. Uh, it's a very reactive community. So you can check the Google group and the mailing list. Every time you have a problem, they are uh, very reactive to answer to it. You can uh, also check their uh, GitHub project. 
uh, as you can see, there are issues and pull requests. You have always information. You know, uh, you know to, uh, you need to know what your needs are because BDR isn't suitable for all needs uh, and for everyone uh, in the room. Uh, one missing part we think is the sanity checks. To perform sanity checks, we wrote our own functions to check many tables and call, pro function to and call procedures. Uh, but by default, it doesn't came with a with a clear with a clear visualization of what is the status of our cluster. So I don't really know by default uh, if I have a node missing, a node lost, uh, replication lag, conflicts, and so on. But one thing that we are uh, enthusiastic about is the, the third version of BDR is coming this year. So it will have enhanced features and compatibilities with a newer version of PostgreSQL because at the moment, uh, for everyone, only uh, it's only suitable for PostgreSQL 9.4. So what's next? Uh, what's next for BDR? The, the the release of the third version is coming soon. And in our cases, we have many challenges. The first one, we want to give ownership of production to dev to development teams. So we have to build the right tools and to spread the knowledge. Uh, I think the, the main problem in every team is the, the, the knowledge isn't spread enough. And one other big challenge is that our orchestration tool that I presented earlier, Fleet, it, it became duplicated. So we are going to look at uh, Kubernetes to, uh, for, from now. We already looked from last year, but it's going on. So we are going to switch to Kubernetes. And with that, we are wondering uh, what if we switch our container engine? So the, the main common product used is Docker. So we know that there are very big community using Docker. And it's best, it's better for us if we have problems and so on to have an active community to answer our problems and our questions. So with that, we also want to be like cloud agnostic if we want to switch to the cloud. So right now, we still are on promise with our own servers. But we want to keep the ability to switch at any moment, even if it's on AWS or GCP or anything else. So thanks for your attention. Thank you very much. Do you have any questions? Don't, I don't really understand why you choose BDR instead of PG Logical. Uh, PG Logical doesn't handle multi master nodes, so you could only one have one master node that spread the new changement to all the other nodes. So with the use of uh, BDR, we have the ability to have from two to 48 nodes that handle either the reads and the writes. Uh, how, how do you handle the high ability in the, at the storage level? On the storage level, all our servers have local storage. So in this case, it's just it. But for example, you want, because it's if you lose one node, for example. I mean, if one container stops working. Yes. Um, uh, are you able to, to mount to, to start another container with the attached attach of the uh, storage? Uh, as we run local storage, if the, the new container run on the same host, it will be transparent and use the, the local storage. But if it's going to start on another host, not the same, at this time, it will rejoin the cluster as a new node. So we have la a little bit of time where it's going to transfer all the data from one node to, to the other node. So it will act like a, as a new node. OK, OK. So. I, I, I don't know if you know that Docker has uh, a lot of plugins 
to to do this this thing like red ray um, do you uh, I'm not really into those Docker features, okay. so I have a little bit knowledge, but uh, not so much. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, what is your database size, and uh, how many time does it take to prepare a new node uh, when spawning a new container? Um, our database it's uh, about a hundred gigabytes. And for preparing a new node, when we when we are in the same data centers, is few minutes. But uh, when it's on another data center, it's going to be like uh, ten to twenty minutes. For depends on the network. And um, did you observe some uh, I/O uh, overhead uh, when you choose to to use container before uh, when you wasn't uh, when you weren't uh, using containers? Uh, yes, we have a bit of overhead on performance size, but uh, not not so much. But it's like really transparent for us. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, I saw someone that didn't really agree with me in the far in the room about uh, right uh, availabilities for right scales. I think it was you. Maybe you have something to say for uh, right features for PG Logical? With PG Logical, you, with PG Logical, you can't do multi-master too, but the point is that BDR is using PG Logical behind. Yeah. So it add on PG Logical all the framework required to be able to uh, do the DDL and everything you mentioned before. Okay. So uh, like that, it will be clear for everyone. Thanks for the <laughs> explanation. All right, so thank you for oh, another question. Sorry. Uh, did you make a lot of changes to your application to handle uh, conflicts? Uh, not, uh, not really, because with HA proxy, you have the ability to configure your backends as backups nodes. So on the, in our service discovery stack, I'm going to show you the preview slides. Right there. So in HA proxy with GoSynapse, you have to ability to configure backups backends. So you, we only have to add a, a little bit of configuration, and all the rights, uh, if you want, go to only one node. So it's the um, the recommended way to do so. But uh, if you want to to go to, to spread the rights to all nodes at the same time, you could do so. But your application needs to need to be aware. Or you can extend the conflict resolution uh, process to handle uh, like the way you want. So, in, in fact, um, you are uh, sending all rights to only one node at the same at the same time. It depends on the application, but uh, it's the main case at blah, blah, car, Yes. Okay. But you you can do this, and uh, by default, the conflict resolution is handling by uh, the last right will win. And the, and the last question, sorry. <laughs> um, uh, how many uh, nodes did you scale the up uh, to the ma I mean, maximum? Uh, with BDR? Yes, in your case. Uh, in, your case. Uh, in our case with BDR, we have up to five nodes. And we have five different applications that use BDR. Thank you very much. Thank you.